Hello, this is Ben Herbel, and today we'll be reviewing how we can use the game Empire Total War in the Social Studies classroom. This game is specifically intended for simulation and for getting students hands-on with a time period that they aren't normally used to. Usually they're used to primary source document, recreations, or old paintings of still life people. Um, and it's hard for them to conceptualize this time period because of that. And so this game really breaks a wall with uh, being able to get this time period to come alive and move and for our students to be able to put themselves in the shoes of historical figures and make decisions for them, um, the actions that we decide to take and what results out of that. So uh, today we're gonna be looking at a, a battle that the game has already set up for us, uh, the Battle of Brandywine Creek in 1777. Uh, we see there George Washington's Continental Army and um, it's highlighting right now a pass um, on the right flank of the Continental Army that the British forces under George Cornwallis and William Howe utilized to defeat George Washington. Um, it has already split uh, the British forces in two, just like they, they were in 1777. We see uh, Howe and Cornwallis' forces over here and the Hessian mercenary forces over here. Um, so as we see in this game, we'll just get these forces moving. Uh, we're going to use these Hessian forces to occupy uh, the continental front while we flank around the back. Um, we see here line forces um, that it's oftentimes hard for students to conceptualize uh, how warfare was back in the 1700s. And so here we really will be able to get a good look at what this combat looked like and students will be able to um, have an idea of it as well. So within the game, uh, we'll be able to see, uh, hopefully get students to think about what impacted the battle, uh, what technological forces were used back then as we see um, here with these light infantry forces that we have selected now, they can place stakes in the ground. <laughs> uh, we can talk about why they might have wanted to do that back then. Um, or even with these Hessian line forces, we can see at the ends of their guns, uh, bayonets. And we can talk about uh, the innovation of the bayonet and uh, how that changed warfare. Um, the game does have a fast forward option, so I'm just going to utilize that to move these troops a little faster and set them to run. We just want to get a taste of this so we can keep talking about the rest of the software. And. So this game can be employed in uh, eighth grade social studies class uh, here in Nebraska under the state standards that uh, have eighth grade teaching about uh, U.S. history and then also in a U.S. history class in high school um, if we're going to be talking about the American Revolution. But this class can also be used in a world history course as we talk about imperialism and what that looked like. This game has a battle portion like this where we can see battles take place but it also has a campaign map where students could control a nation and um, make decisions of imperialism as they move around and control their armies and control their cities so um, this game really does have so many different um, facets we we can use uh, we're gonna have our artillery unlimber here and turn around and see how artillery played a role in the battlefields of the 1700s. Did we inflict any damage? Ah, two troops lost. So the great thing is, uh, each student, if the resources were available, would be able to simulate this on their battles at the same time, uh, or simulate this on their computers at the same time, and compare with their classmates their results. Um, this also opens the door for talking about the results of their battle. Um, in real life, the British forces did outflank the Continental Forces of George Washington and routed them, and it led to the occupation of Philadelphia. But maybe in their battle, uh, they send their troops around the flank and nothing happens <laughs> and they end up losing or 
or maybe the students decide to push all of their forces up the middle here and uh, they end up losing. This opens the door for in these these failures for students to be able to talk about uh, why why the results happened as they did. Um, why did they end up losing the battle and, instead of winning like the British forces actually did. We see how our forces over here have been discovered and they're gonna pull around some cavalry and other forces to meet us back into this combat. So we see how uh, the line infantry line up, kneel and fire their shots, and then kneel and, and reload, and the next line fires. Students can get an idea of how this combat looked, uh, probably like they uh, never have before. It also allows us to draw comparisons between uh, let's say the the lighter the lighter line infantry or Minutemen of the Continental Army versus the heavy and well-trained forces of Britain. So for the sake of keeping the video short, we're going to <laughs> uh, it out and we can talk about the, the rest of the program and how we can use it in a classroom. Just when it's getting good. This game, uh, at the end of the battle, it'll show uh, the results. Uh, how many we deployed versus how many we ended up losing in the battle. Um, this game also allows us for, as educators, to set up other battles. Not just what's pre in the game, but um, to be able to, let's say we want to recreate the the battle of Bunker Hill. We could select a map, go in and select the forces we want, the United States and England, and then go in and uh, assuming that early in the war, um, all we have are some Minutemen militia and set up the battle like, like so. This game also offers the ability for multiplayer local area network and having students uh, play against other students in the classroom. Um, perhaps even uh, letting students figure out who the best Imperial General was. <laughs> um, it gives students uh, something to be motivated about and a fun platform for a competition and uh, hopefully good enough graphics to keep them entertained. and. Um, it isn't a, a bunch of pictures or even a tabletop simulation, but uh, to be able to have technology like this is really great for meeting students uh, where they're at in terms of video game and video game technology. Um, that does also create a problem with students who are good at video games versus students who have never touched a video game or uh, are bad at playing games on the computer. Uh, it does definitely create a tension that uh, has to be overcome in the classroom. This game uh, marks very high when we evaluate it um, in terms of uh, correct, connecting with the uh, curriculum and authenticity um, and user friendliness to be able to have a, a nice clean professional game. Um, the sound and the graphics are immersive and uh, fluid. Um, this game, when we evaluate it um, out of blooms, we see uh, that it hits um, high in application and simulation to be able to apply what we're talking about in class and being able to see it played out. Um, for the SAMR model, uh, it, it fits into the, the redefinition portion of, of transformation. So um, this tech allows us to create uh, new tasks previously inconceivable. Previously without this technology, we wouldn't be able to uh, simulate the Revolutionary War see what battles looked like back then or, or how they're how they uh, what factors played a role in that um, yeah so this this game definitely has drawbacks for for implement implementation with uh, the cost of the game and being able to have computers that will run run the game well for students um, so another option is to have just the teacher running this game from the front and students being able to see uh, the simulation. Um, although I think it definitely is best to have it a one-to-one -one where each student has the ability to, to experience and play the game. 
Um, there's a lot this has to offer, um, and definitely just scratching the surface in this video of, of how we can implement it. So thanks for watching, and can't wait to be back reviewing uh, another app soon.